So special polynomials, we've talked about two special polynomials before, and one of those is a perfect square trinomial, or as you guys know, I like to call it PST for short. The other one is a difference of squares. So perfect square trinomial is whenever you have A plus B, just writing the formula, squared. Now that's not A squared plus B squared. That does not equal that. That's a big no on that. What happens is you get A squared, the last term is b squared, but you have this middle term that's double a b. So double a plus b. So for example, if you have x squared plus 14x plus 49, that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 49 is 7. x times 7 is 7x times 2 is 14x. And there's a plus here, so I put a plus here. Parentheses squared. That's it. Um, now, I can get really crazy with it if I see a 4x squared minus, and way over here I have 81. Well, the square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 81 is 9. I see a minus, but the middle term would have to be 2x times 9 is 18x. Double that, so I get 36x, and then it would be 2x minus 9 squared. So that's where that 2ab comes from, is you take the square roots, multiply them, and then double it. So we've seen perfect square trinomial, three terms, before. And the other well-known one is difference of squares, where you just have a plus b times a minus b. And that makes that middle term cancel out. So you get a squared minus b squared difference because it's a difference in the middle, unlike the last one. And remember that you could have a minus b squared, and that would give you a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So the ones we haven't talked about yet are what if you have a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. So sum of cubes would be if you had a cubed plus b cubed. That's a sum of cubes. A difference of cubes would be if you had a cubed minus b cubed. So that's your sum difference of, cube, of cubes. And the issue with these ones are that you can't set up your x and try to factor that way. On this, you could set up your x. You could try to factor it. Difference of squares, you all know the formula pretty well. But if you have one of these two options, you can't set up your x. You have to know the formula. And what happens because you have something cubed is you get a linear factor and you get a quadratic factor. So it would look like this. So a sum of cubes, if I take the cubic root of each term, I get a plus b. And then I need a quadratic factor because 1 plus 2 equals 3. To get the quadratic one, I'm now going to square. So I get a squared minus AB, if I can write, minus AB plus B squared. That's my formula. And we're going to do some problems in just a second with it. Okay, so if you notice, I took the cubic root. What's the cubic root of A cubed? A. What's the cubic root of B cubed? B. To here to here, I just squared it. To there to there, I just squared it. And to get the middle term, I don't have to do 2AB. It's just AB. That's it. Now, if it's a minus, what happens is it doesn't do a plus b, it becomes a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. And there's this saying to help you remember which symbols, and the saying is soap. Soap. S stands for the same sign. So notice minus here, minus here. That was a plus, which created a plus right there. So that linear one has the same sign. O stands for opposite sign. Notice I go from a plus to a minus. I go from a minus to a plus. So the opposite sign of what you originally had. And A stands for always positive because that last symbol is always positive. So just remember, with sum of cubes and difference of cubes, we don't really have S, C, D, C, but the thing to remember is that phrase, soap. So it really helps if you know your cubes and all of your cube roots and all of that. So going through, it goes 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 
5 cubed is 125. 6 cubed, 6 times 6 is 36 times 6. I'm going to be honest, I can't think of it off the top of my head. So I'm Googling it really quickly. I haven't had coffee yet today. We'll blame it on that. Two sixteen, yeah, that's right. So one eight twenty seven sixty four two sixteen. Seven cubed is three forty three. Eight cubed is five twelve. Nine cubed is seven twenty nine. But mostly you're gonna see these ones right here, especially three forty three. We've talked about that number before. Three forty three is really popular. Two forty three, I think, was the other one that we've talked about. So if I take a look at this one, I have two terms. I can't set up my x to factor it. There's no middle term, it's cubed. But x cubed is a perfect cubed and 27 is a perfect cubed. So I'm gonna follow soap. So what's the cubic root of x cubed? x. What's the cubic root of 27? Three. To go from here to here, I'm going to square it. So x squared is x squared. To get the term in the middle, so remember I have two terms, three terms. So I should end up with a binomial and then a trinomial. So x times 3 is 3x. That's how I get that middle term. And 3 squared becomes 9. And then I follow the rules of SOAP. So same sign a plus, opposite sign a minus, and then always positive. And if you do it correctly, you always end up with a linear and a quadratic because 1 plus 2 is 3. Hopefully you said it out loud. Okay, taking a look at the next one, 8x cubed plus 125. So I have two terms. 8x cubed is a perfect cube. 125 is a perfect cube. So take the cube root of each of those. So the cube root of 8x cubed is 2x. Remember, 2 and then three, and kind of create blanks if that helps you out. The cubic root of 125 is five. To go from here to here, I square it. So two x squared is not two x squared. Two x squared like that is actually four x squared. To go from here to here, you square it. So five squared is 25. And then to get the middle term, I'm just going to multiply these together. And I don't have to double it because it's not a PST. 2x times 5 becomes 10x. And then I follow the rules of SOAP. So same sign plus opposite sign minus always positive. And I have a linear factor and a quadratic factor because 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, now if I take a look at this one, I have 3a cubed minus 81x cubed. Okay, it's not a difference of squares. 3 is not a perfect cube. But if I notice 3 and 81, remember, if you can take something out at the beginning and make your numbers smaller, take something out. So I can take something out because 3 divided by 3 is going to change that to a cubed minus 81 divided by 3 is 27x cubed. So I took out a 3, and now if I'm looking at this, I do have something special. I have a difference of cubes. I'm going to write DC for short. So 3, don't forget, is your very first factor. What's the cubic root of A cubed? A. What's the cubic root of 27 cubed? 27x cubed? 3x. It doesn't matter how crazy it is. As long as they're perfect cubes, cube root it. And then over here, A squared is A squared. 3x times A is 3ax or 3xA. And the last term, if you put 3x squared, you have to be careful because 3 squared is 9. So it's not 3x squared, it's 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. And then follow the rules of SOAP. So because this was a difference, same sign means minus, then opposite would be plus, and the last one should always be positive, always positive, plus. And that's it. I have my linear, I have my quadratic. Okay, going across... I see 3x to the 4th minus 3x. Well, neither of those are perfect cubes, but they both have a 3, and they have x to the 4th and x. So I'm not going to take out just a 3. I'm going to take out a 3x. And when I do that, I'm left with x cubed minus 1. And remember, 1 is a perfect cube. So cube root it, cube root it. 
Remember your first factor is 3x, and then my linear factor is gonna be x minus one, because same sign, so let's fix that parenthesis. And then my quadratic factor is gonna be x squared, so soap, same sign, opposite sign, x times one is one x, which is just x, always positive, plus one. And if it helps you out, you can draw out your blanks. So some people like to do like, I know I'm gonna have two terms and I'm gonna have three terms, right? And then they'll fill out their soap and then they'll kind of go through and fill in the blanks. It's up to you as long as you end up with the right number of factors. So I have one, one, two, one plus one plus two makes four, which is what I get right here. So we're good to go. 8x to the 4th plus 27x. Now, 8 and 27 are perfect cubes, but x to the 4th and x take out an x. And now they are perfect cubes because your variables have to match up as well. And 8 and 27 have no number in common. So once you've done that, that's it. So if you need to fill in your blanks, fill in your blanks. I'm going to have a binomial. And then I'm going to have a trinomial. I know I'm gonna have to follow soap. So same sign plus, minus, plus. And you can fill that in before you do anything else. So the cubic root of 8x cubed would be 2x. So I'm gonna have a 2x here. I'm gonna have a 4x squared there because 2x times 2x is 4x squared. The cubic root of 27 is three. So I'm gonna get a three here and I'm gonna get a three here. And to get this middle term, all I do is multiply. 2x times 3 is 6x. And that's it. So you can't really set up your x on these problems. If you set up your x, you're going to need four terms to group it up. And then you get linear, quadratic. If you know your formula, it goes way, way faster. So taking a look at the next one. 64x cubed y minus 125y to the fourth power. Now, 64 and 125 don't have a number in common, but that's okay because those are perfect cubes. X cubed is a perfect cube, but then I have Y and then I have Y to the fourth. They both have a Y, so take a Y out. So if I take out a Y, I get 64X cubed minus 125Y to the fourth. If I take out a Y, I'm left with Y to the power of 3. So cube root, so I get y, cubic root of 64x cubed is 4x, same sign, so minus. The cubic root of 125y cubed is 5y, so same sign, I filled in my binomial. Now I have to do my trinomial, and this is one you have to be really careful on, because if you say 4x squared should go here and 5y squared should go there, nope. That should be 16x squared because it's 4x times 4x and 5y times 5y is going to be 25y squared. And then I'm going to have a plus and a plus because opposite sign and always positive. But then what goes in the middle right there? This times this. So 4 times 5 is 20xy. Just like that. Okay, now if I look at these two down here, if you look at these, you might notice that they're not perfect cubes, they're not trinomials, they're polynomials with four terms. And that goes back to what we did the other day, which is where, see, can you take anything out, group it up, and then that's it. So these are ones where you don't have a formula, it goes back to what you did yesterday. So in here I can take out an x, I'm left with x cubed plus three x squared plus x plus three, and then I'm going to look at the first half, and I can take out an x squared. I'm left with x plus 3. And in the second half, remember, you have to take something out. So I'm going to take out a 1, and I'm left with x plus 3. So I get x times x squared plus 1, because I first took out an x, and then I had x squared plus 1, and then I have x plus 3. And notice linear, linear, quadratic, 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. So whether you're factoring by grouping or factoring with sum of cubes, difference of cubes, one of those special ones, I think honestly the trinomials like this 
are harder because that has more steps than the ones we've been doing recently. But that's me. Looking at this one, they have nothing in common. So I can just go ahead and group it. Out of the first half, I'm going to take out x squared. And I'm left with x plus 3. Out of the second half, you can take out negative 16, which leaves you with x plus 3. And once you're here, x squared minus 16 times x plus 3. Don't forget, we added some new ones, sum of cubes, difference of cubes. But don't forget right here, have a difference of squares. So square root it, square root it. And remember, that's just going to be x plus 4 times x minus 4 times x plus 3. So I get three linears. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And that's it. So several different ways to factor, but you have to look at what you're given to decide. Are you going to use a formula? Are you going to set up your X? Or are you just going to go ahead and group it up? And that's factoring.